Welcome to Linked Up, Breaking Boundaries in Education, a podcast that focuses on what is happening in education today, connecting everyone to the movers and shakers that are breaking boundaries in the education arena. Welcome to Linked Up, Breaking Boundaries in Education. So, Jerry, when you were in a district, you were in several districts, I know that when I was in them, you know, you kind of like, or you're going, you get on a train in September and you go, 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 but then some things knock you off your track, off right? The tracks, yes. Off the tracks. And we need to be resilient and we need to have a plan in place when that happens. And I think we're going to be hearing from two women who have written the book on how we can do that with some trouble that might ensue in districts, right? When we run in, run into some, some difficult times. Yes. And Jamie, I think we've all been around long enough that trauma wasn't really a focus for no. many years. Um, you know, no. you would say, oh, get them to the counselor or, and, and not everyone was involved, right. but right. Um, we're finding out that everyone in the school really needs to be involved and have a hand in all of this. And I am so excited today to bring to Linked Up Breaking Boundaries in Education two Lawrenceans that live right here in Lawrence. All three of us live in Lawrence, Kansas. And I'll start with Jerry. Parscal, she has worked for um, Solution Tree. It was, I almost lost it there. Oh, no. <laughs> and Solution Tree, oh my gosh, they are such a legitimate, sound, wonderful company that has done so many things over the years. I remember um, going to learn about uh, professional learning communities. Sure. With it, and seeing the divorce in person, oh, it yes. was like seeing, you know, movie stars. It was so <laughs> exciting. And Jerry has worked with them for quite a while. How long have you worked 18, there? 18 years. I've consulted mm -hmm. with them for 18 years and been in education for a total, total of 38. So 38. yes, the past 18 years, I've been blessed to be able to work with Solution Tree. They're wonderful. And what did you do in education prior to Solution Tree? So I, 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 my dad always used to tell me it looked like I couldn't hold a job because I would go from thing to thing. Um, I was a, a teacher um, at, at a various levels. I've been a principal. I've been a director of professional development. And then I actually ended my on-site career as the deputy superintendent at the Fort Leavenworth schools in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So exciting. And our second guest today is Darcy Kraus. And I had the pleasure of working with Darcy for nine years in Lawrence Public Schools. And I am going to tell you, this lady has a reputation like no other. She, people would say, what would Darcy say? You know, like the, what would Jesus do bracelets? It was like, what would Darcy say? People would go to her because she is her advice and caring and concern about leadership and teachers and kids is unparalleled. She is one of the finest people that I've ever worked with. And I am so proud to have both of these ladies here with us today. Yeah. Sure. I want to say before Darcy, you introduce yourself. This is not your first time on Linked Up here. No. We also called you to uh, join us for your expertise at another time. I'll look up the episode number, but um, but yeah, this is your second time back, so welcome back. Oh, thank you. It's like old home week. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Darcy, tell us a little bit about your trajectory in oh, your God. career. Um. I, like Jerry, um, Jerry with a G, have been in education uh, for 38 years, um, which means I have, have had the opportunity to serve in a lot of different roles and capacities. I was a teacher uh, for the, the, the majority of that time and then moved my way in um, with lots of great mentors um, into leadership, building principal and Oh, I don't know, instructional coach and, and ended my uh, career or retired from um, 
the elementary director position in Lawrence Public Schools. And now I get to do the parts of my job that I love the most, um, which is helping new leaders uh, become great leaders. And yes. um, I, I kind of a potpourri of activities that comes with being an educational consultant and um, that and I'm a grandma now. And so um, I'm able to have some flexibility in my schedule to just uh, love on love on a little nugget that I have. So. Oh, so exciting. Well, we're glad to have you both here today. And these two ladies have written this book, Navigating the Unexpected. And when I looked at it, I don't know Jerry as well as I know Darcy, but it just looked like Darcy on the cover. <laughs> I just love, I, I mean, I, I love the art design, everything. I was like, yeah, this is Darcy. This is so Darcy. And Jerry, is that true? Oh, yes. It is so dark. <laughs> it is so darcy. And we we were given um, several examples of, of covers. And I and it was interesting because when we chose the cover, cover, both of us independently and then got together and said, this is it. And and there was not even a discussion. It was just that's the one. You we wanted. Yes. It's super cool. It's really cool. I love it. Thank I you. do, too. So what inspired you? I'll start that yeah. one. Um, so my youngest son, Nicholas, was diagnosed with a pineal blastoma in 2016. Uh, mm. That's a brain tumor. For him, it was inoperable. And he was right between his third and fourth grade year. It was diagnosed in July. And it just so happened that Darcy and I had a meeting on the books uh, for that following week to talk about Nicholas and his placement and all those things. And so she was one of the first that I had to call and say, I won't be able to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and I shared it with her. And of course she was one of the first at the hospital. And I, I think that he is the um, inspiration for the book because we truly did navigate his education and, yeah. um, through the, through the eyes of a terminal disease. And he did pass in, in 21. Um, but I think that Darcy and I, as we continued our friendship, um, and as we processed, we realized certain things. And so I'm going to turn it over to Darcy and let her, her take that, that route. Right, because she was the principal at Nicholas's she was, school. was, yes. I forgot the most important yes. part. And that was that we were blessed, uh, talking about leadership, we were oh, blessed yeah. to have Darcy as Nicholas's principal um, at Sunset Hill. And so, and that's where he was, he was attending. So I'm going to turn it over to Darcy. Thanks, Barry. That, that no matter how many times I hear it, that, that always brings up emotion for both of us. Um, because we go into education, right? Because we love our kids and, and we love the families. And um, Nicholas was no exception. I think we share in the book um, that getting it right the first time was super important um, mm -hmm. because we didn't have second yes. chances. And um, I'd done a lot of things and ha had a lot of opportunities, but I'd never had to navigate this type of thing. So I do what teachers do, right? We start researching and it's like, there has to be somebody out there who's done this better and with a, a high degree of effectiveness and I need to learn from them. And, um, and I had to do it quickly, right? And as mm -hmm. I researched, I found that there was just this chasm uh, of information. It, it, there was a void. Um, yes, there were books on trauma, all kinds, oodles and gobs, but none that actually spoke to how a school um, should address and support the multiple stakeholders and sustain them throughout the trauma. Because yes, traumas oftentimes are immediate and we find out about them and it's it's jarring but the support that needs to be um, shared initially um, is, is just the, the tip of the iceberg, if you will. And mm -hmm. that kind of underlying uh, mass of support that needs to follow the trauma 
is is huge and can be daunting for our systems now that um, are are kind of antiquated in, in a lot of different ways yes. and not meant to um, support the multiple needs and the mass of um, experiences that our kids are having to endure at this point in time. So out of that, Jerry and I began to process um, and we would talk about woulda, shoulda, coulda, right? Armchair quarterback. And um, together we partnered our way through it. But on the back side of that, talked about paying it forward, which is very important to both of us. Wow. And um, now that we're, you know, on the on the twilight, or as my Jerry with mm-hmm. a J loves to say, our third act in our careers, um, how can we provide a framework of our experiences that can be housed in a resource that you can pick up and sit down? That was super important to us or read cover to cover. And that is one of your skills, Darcy, is you have a knack for taking complex ideas that are all over the place, pulling them together and putting them in a beautiful little package that is understandable to all people. And as I was looking at the book, I saw all of the charts and the templates, the assessments, the ways that you could take all the information you have and start to distill it down to make a plan. Yeah. I was going to say that the thing about this book, when before we even landed on the content, we talked about the format Mm. in as much as it was super important to us that if we went forward with doing this, that it was a book that just like you did, Jerry, you know, you can pick up and put down that it can, it is a framework that can be comprehensively from tip to toe, or you can assess what you already have and kind of plug and play with components Mm -hmm. that um, you may be lacking, right, in in your systems. For example, if you have a data analysis protocol, golly, use yours. If it's Mm -hmm. working for you, use that. But if you don't have one, we provide one. If you don't have a manner of communicating and, and distilling down those salient points that need to be shared in an expedient and confidential manner, use ours. But we are not saying that you have to start at the beginning and go to the end because there are standalone components within the construct of the framework itself. Right. I think what I think what we were trying to do, well, I know what we were trying to do is is to help school districts and schools um, build a system of yeah. support. Because I, you know, schools, when they think of crisis or they think of trauma, things like intruder on campus, uh, fire right. drills, tornado drills. And, and guess what? We do those really well because we have systems for that. Exactly. And I know that Darcy and I both work with schools daily who may have a, tra- um, a, 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 a student support team. If you have that, use that team. Um, because we refer to it in our book as the dynamic problem solving team, Mm -hmm. but the team part Mm -hmm. is the most important, right? And so just like Darcy said, if, if, excuse me, if you're interested in taking it from becoming trauma informed all the way through, we give you that. If we don't need that, but we just need a, you know, how do we assess this? We have that too. So you know, we really have set yeah. it up well. You yes. know, I think I love what you said earlier, Darcy. You know, you, you come to this trauma is staring you in the face and you have to get it right. You yeah. have to get it right. And you you don't and if you you don't if you react instead of respond, you may not. And so it sounds like what the two of you have provided is a really strong uh, companion that they can obviously they're not going to be able to read it from cover to cover when this trauma strikes them right but now they can have you know reference this already and go to the parts 
that they need based on where they are in the process. And so it's, it's, it's a guide along the way, which sounds really, really um, imperative to have. So it's not we something you want to get after the fact. You want to have it. Right. You want to have right. it now. You want well, to reference it. You want to see where you might need it. You don't know. You really right. don't know. But right. at least you know where to where to go to find the tools that you need uh, so that you can get it right. And we talk about, you know, in the first chapter, you know, when, when we hear trauma or we hear crisis, I know that when Darcy and I were researching for the book, one of the startling statistics that we heard was two-thirds of our students worldwide are now reporting that they have been a victim of a traumatic event or a crisis mm. event by the time they turn the age of 16. Oh my gosh. So what we are seeing in the classrooms on a, on mm. a, on a daily basis are more social emotional needs, more uh, physical needs and, uh, and more uh, what's the Darcy behavioral. Hunter? Behavioral, thank you. How can I forget yeah. that one? Along with, excuse me, long, along with academic needs. And I know that my social media feed is full. All of them are full of teachers who are concerned as they go into yes. this next school year. And we outline in the chapter, the first chapter, um, because if, if schools are sitting there saying, oh, we got this we're good, nothing bad ever happens in Pick the Town, um, mm. we outline, and I'll just read a couple. Um, an 11th grader in your school has a younger sibling who is missing, and the family fears the missing member is now being a victim of human trafficking. Mm. Uh, a family of three traumatized with three traumatized children fleeing from a war-torn country enrolls in your school. A devastating weather event impacts your community and the lives of several families. Um, a, a fifth grader, a fifth grade student collapses on the playground. EMTs work on her uh, in the front office and transport her to the hospital, but she passes away on the way to the emergency room. These, it, mm -hmm. trauma is unfortunately, is appearing in our kids' lives over and over and over. And what I hope we do with this book is set the school up for success. It doesn't mean that you have to wait until you have a child like Nicholas who walks in who has a brain tumor. You instead, ha you can have the system set up so that when that trauma does eke in, and it will, you're ready to go curious when this was published uh it came out of may of this year may of okay, 21 may of this year so have you so seen hot off studies? the press hot off the press have you hot seen uh, this is a book study i mean i feel yeah. like yeah. this is a great book for teams now what did you call them hold on you had a good phrase for the team Dynamic? The dynamic problem solving team. Okay. Deep for the dynamic problem solving team, this needs to be a book study for sure. Mm -hmm. Because again, they need to get ahead of any trauma that they do not know that is out there waiting for them. And I feel like this is for sure going to do it. But Jamie, I, I, I think what you had said is exactly where Jerry and I had gone with this. In as much as we practice our drills, we have those systems every month. We all practice them. And yet our kids in our schools probably aren't going to be in a fire or a tornado drill. They could go through their whole entire careers, academic journey, right? Without having to actually put those into practice in a real um, experience. And True. yet with our two thirds of our kiddos, they're going to encounter a traumatic situation. And as educators, we want to flood them with support. It, we talk a lot in the book about that, you know, the casserole brigade and all that stuff. And that's all super important. Mm -hmm. But as a leader, how do you take all that wonderful passion and effort and concern and empathy and harness it in a productive and efficacious manner? Yeah. Um, wow. The other part of it that as a leader that I think you have to look at as is through the lens um, of equity. 
right? Because if you have one child experiencing this and you have another child experiencing that and you've got a building of 600 or 60, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen more than once. And you have to be able to respond in a manner that provides flexible fidelity is what we like to call it, right? Mm -hmm. That we have fidelity to a system that ensures that we are filtering the information and the processes and the protocols and the tools through a previously um, originated system of support so that everything that we do comes through a lens of equitable response and not one person getting everything because it's new and it just happened and then something else happens to another family or another child or another teacher or uh, name them, you know, and, and they get a lesser approach because our resources are whittled down. So that mm. too was kind of a satellite thought for me going into this. Mm. Um, I come from Lawrence equity is um, a, a focus of our district and um, we had never talked about it in, res in in this manner. It was all in the more the traditional veins. But my mm. equity lens uh, definitely layered on as we were we were drafting this book. What kind of research did you have to put in to <laughs> creating this book? Oh, Jerry! Jerry is our research maven. She's amazing wow. at it. So. Yeah. Lots. Um, so, you know, I, I think I think a, a place to start is like Darcy said, is what is out there. Mm -hmm. currently. And and she she spoke the truth. There are some great books out there that talk about trauma or crisis. Mm -hmm. And since COVID, right, we're seeing more and more. So there's lots of research out there. But the thing that we found, and of course it is grounded in research, um, it is the fact that, how do I put this? The how-to mm -hmm. just wasn't there. Yeah. And, no. you know, we were seeing the, okay, when this happens, then we need to go ahead and do this. I think that that uh, kind of puts it into perspective because everything seemed to be okay now we're going to have this trauma so let's go ahead and do this whereas what darcy and i wanted to be able to do is throughout the book we start with being becoming trauma informed as an educator and going all the way through the steps um, from building the team to talking about communication to talking about um, looking at your data, making sure that you're providing the best intervention. Um, how are you going to collect the data? And then one of the things that I think that we're most proud of is within the book. Um, we, we call it our four square focus template mm -hmm. because what we see and what we saw in, you mentioned data, what we saw in the data was, and really from our real life is we're seeing because of the trauma, we're seeing behavioral needs, social, social emotional needs, physical needs, along with academic needs. And right. I can say the same thing for Nicholas. You know, those four areas were, were the areas of, of need for him. And we designed it so that um, I'm going to start it out because once, and then I'm going to turn it over to Darcy once so imagine you are a principal you have this great plan you're set and you and your dynamic problem solving team have talked about looked at all the data and talked about those four areas of focus mm -hmm. and you have a plan and then one day jerry calls you uh mama to nicholas calls darcy and says you know his platelets are down or he's not feeling well he's still going to come but but everything changes and then, Darcy, I'm going to turn it over to you because I think this happened more times than you care to admit. It did. Um, and, and quite frankly, if we're honest, this is an area where um, Jerry and I got stuck. We had the four square focus. We recognized the importance of making this one template 
um, one in, in that could be used in a ubiquitous manner, whether the kid had physical, just physical mm -hmm. issues or just social emotional. So we had the four squares, but the communication of it in um, keeping the student at the center um, mm -hmm. was was a challenge. And it's where I stumbled, um, quite frankly, um, when Jerry would call me because as you can well imagine and know, um, there are a host of individuals that feed into every kid every day. And it was important to communicate with them while maintaining that level of confidentiality that we're charged with, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't go on the loudspeaker or the intercom in the morning and go, hey, Nicholas's plates are low. Don't expect a lot from him today. I can't do that. So our four square focus comes with a color coding component and the DPST initially will color code the squares. Green is go. He is full on with that. The supports that we've listed underneath as to what you should be doing. It's a go, go, go. Uh, you know, a yellow is use your best judgment. This may be a push. This may be a pull, you know, and red is don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. We, uh, you know, you may know something, you may not know something. I'm telling you that do not touch his academics today, right? Focus yes. on the other areas. And so what we're able to do with very little verbiage is reallocate the colors to the various mm -hmm. um, four components that immediately allows every person on the child or the classes care team, because classes can can have their own um, four square focus that we need to work on. If they, you know, the teacher was in a trauma or, or you know, again, right. name your, the variables, but this allows an immediate communication um, in a confidential manner that mm -hmm. allows the care team to know what focus is on their plate that day and which areas to address. And that was kind of that linchpin that for us was missing when we developed um, the template to collect the data and develop the um, the plan system of approach for the student. And if I may throw in right as uh, the the we designed this for the educators to look holistically to because sure. the partner in this trauma could be the family and should yeah. be the family mm -hmm. because even though Darcy and I were, um, were, were having those conversations, one of the things that I felt being an educator myself though, and knowing, you know, it shouldn't be on Darcy to get the information out, but I knew that Nicholas had been sick the night before. And that saves me, that four square focus template saves me as the parent from having to feel guilty <laughs> for not telling everyone or not being able to tell everyone. We all know that that is, that system is in, again, it's a system. And our mm -hmm. next step in the system is, and we've answered that. So. Yeah. yeah. So the four square template, how would that work? Is it digital? Right. So, so it's a link, right? Because everything is electronic now <clears throat> and it can be, you know, we talk in the book about having a, um, a an email group, if you will, already aligned with his care team. And again, in the case of, of Nicola, um, yes. so the care team is already. So all the administrator has to do is having talked to Jerry. I can literally bring it up while we're talking, change the colors, resend it and everybody, because we've done some background work, right? With our, our staff, mm -hmm. everybody knows, look for the color, look for the color. They've already familiarized themselves with the support as a leader. You've already established the resources that are needed, but everybody all at once, um, it, it basically reverberates throughout the school in a very timely manner. And um, even the, the custodian, you know, the custodian played a big role with Nicholas. Sure. Um, our kitchen workers, our nurse, everybody. 
Um, and if you think about your secondary schools, I had the privilege of being at an elementary, but our secondary schools, I mean, mm -hmm. you need like a helipad to get from one wing to the other. And you just can't communicate, we believe, as effectively as you can in, in this manner. Um, so, you yeah. know, the, the other thing is, too, one of the things that we say in the book is you have to plan for the student that you have today, not the student you had for yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned, Jerry, you had asked about, you know, the, the research that goes into it and the research is out there that's pretty clear is, is you know, the trauma is going to change change us, change yeah. the family, change the student. And I think that four square template, four square focus template allows us to be able to do that, to plan for the student today. Right. Yes. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's, I, I just think it's a, it's a, it's something again, kind of going back to the first of this part of the conversation that's just not out there that I think what Darcy and I have made is an easy um, teacher friendly tool. And it's a tool. It's a, it's a tool mm. of, of being able to prepare yourself and your school and your team, because we see it of course, as a support for kids, right. And for students, but not, I mean, but it's also a support for teachers because they're the ones that are throwing up their hands saying, I just don't know what else to do. The whole goal was to keep the student at the center. And so that is key. And it's it, the tool itself is dynamic because that way you are able to keep the student at the center. As you mentioned, actually, I was gonna say daily things may change, but within a day, things are going to change yes. too. And I, I'm assuming that this template allows for that too. And just like you said, teachers are so busy with, I mean, I was just talking to my niece. She has 28 first graders in a class. They were gone in the opposite direction now. And that's a lot. That's so many little kiddos. You're dealing with so much. So this tool just seems so easy to use and communicate. It seems great. I can and, just imagine because you said you were stuck when you're trying to do to come up with this. And yeah. I think it sounds like the color coding was the key. And I could just yeah. see the two of you like, oh, <laughs> we, we, were, we were sitting at Panera working yeah. on this book. And all of the sudden it was just this light bulb. You know, yeah. Jamie, you had mentioned, you know, the the and, and you had alluded to it, but I want to bring out the there will be one go to person, right? So yes. Darcy would have been that person, right? For Nicholas and and for me. So I would know <laughs> that I would call Darcy and Darcy would take care of it. And I think that's really important to remember as well is we're not getting a lot of false information out mm -hmm. there and no one else changes the color. Um because it's it's housed in in the world of Darcy, so when she knows, she can make those changes, right. and so that designee uh, is really important too. And we cover, you know, we we talk about that in the book. Yes, I was reading that that you have one key communicator, mm -hmm. and I really liked that because I think even if you're communicating with the student to have too many adults communicating with them yeah. just makes it so cloudy oh, and yeah. they can't figure it out and they have so much going on. Mm -hmm. I thought that was genius just to make sure it's one person. Yeah. And, and not to have a, a, to have a system that is nimble enough to yes. address whatever gets thrown your way. Um, one thing that I know one of the challenges that we all have is, is time, right? And right. so as a leader, um, you, you kind of fall in two camps. And Jamie alluded to this. It's kind of the respond or the react, right? And the thing is, this type of situation is going to happen, period. Right. It just is. Mm -hmm. And it is going to consume your time in one camp or the other, either after yeah or before, but 
if you do it before, you can come forth as a confident and empowered staff that, um, let's face it, schools are our, our hubs, right? Mm-hmm. And and right. you have scared, vulnerable people coming to you. And to be able to stand there as a leader and say, I got you. We yeah. got this. You and I, we're doing this together and we're going to make it work. And on the other side, we're going to be okay. And yes. just to be able to confidently say that is worth its weight in gold. And so, yes, time on the front end, time on the back end. And Jerry, your um, you actually came to mind when my other Jerry and I were talking about this because you're so creative with your visual and your graphics and your colors. And um, we talked about it's the difference between paintball and just throwing kind of a camp. I saw that. Yes, I loved that. Creative. Say more about that. That was so cool. The it, yeah, I saw that chart. Uh, it's it's in it's incumbent upon us to. I think the phrase that we use is instead of a canvas of chaos, we have a palette yep. of precision. Right. Instead oh. of paintballs at the wall, just let's do this. Let's throw a casserole. Let's get a gift card. Let's mm-hmm. let's try this curriculum with them instead of that have a paint by number set right so that the end result you have a turtle and it's got all of the right numbers and colors and each person knows exactly what they should put where and you have a masterpiece at the end instead of this chaos and our kids and our family have gone it they deserve it and uh yes yes it needs to be a book study and yes, it does. yes, I'm going to throw one other thing out when we're talking about that palette of precision um, mm-hmm. is, is the community yeah. because, at, you know, <laughs> Sunset Hill was a small enough community. Everybody knew Nicholas and everybody knew how very sick he was. And um, he was a good kid. Everybody liked him, blah, blah, blah. You know, so they just wanted to, to do everything right and yes. again but 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 that creates chaos that creates ah. chaos for the teachers that creates uh, chaos for the family and and nobody's meaning to right. nobody but this way with what we have at school then that can be mirrored out in the community and so when we have the Facebook questions of, well, what is the school doing? Let us tell you, right? And as best as we can with right. regards to, of course, confidentiality, et cetera. Um, but it's, it's it, you know, and, and Darcy had mentioned, and I hesitate to bring this up, but Darcy had mentioned equity. And there's one other piece I think that this is, it will help on the back end of, and it links to equity, and that is everyone has a plan, and it's seen through. So if for some ugly reason there are legal issues somewhere down the line, um, because we know that happens sometimes, um, there's there's that part. I think that this plays in because again, you've got documentation, you've got a system. You're very clear about what it is you did from the front end all the way to, um, you know, to the, I don't want to say the end, but the end. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is another piece to be thinking of um, because that's just, you know, the fair and the equal, right? And so not going to, not, doesn't want to go down that rabbit hole, but it's something to think about. We're going to add the link to this book in the show notes, but I'm going to be honest. As we were talking, I emailed it to my husband already, who's a superintendent. And I said, get this this for your team. Um, It's a dynamic. Tell me again what it's called. Dynamic problem solving team. Solving. And you, you called it a DPST. Got it. Correct. Correct. Thank you. I know Darcy's husband has said it might not just be for schools. <laughs> right. Yeah, so. that's why, Darcy. Why would he say that? Because, uh, well, 
he, his career was in the prison system and um, there's a lot of trauma there. And he yes. said it felt very much like they were um, paintballing it. And, yes. um, and they, as many systems as they have, um, they, they needed a, a concerted effort that was nimble enough to have a customized approach to, to each individual. And I think um, we called it the benevolent grapevine at uh, Sunset Hill, everybody wanting to do the best based on information, misinformation. And so to be able to actually um, approach this crisis in a manner that would have empowered me, empowered my staff to do the very best we could for Nicholas um, without scrambling behind the scenes every day and every night to make sure we were getting it right, um, mm -hmm. I would have been abundantly grateful for. Um, yes. And so that, that was the heart. Um, you know, Jerry and I, we, we wrote this um, book, we tossed it around. She kind of talked me into it um, because we decided that we had something to say in that chasm of emptiness that's out there. Um, and it is for um, district personnel. It mm -hmm. is for building personnel. It can be um, shared, amplified, and, and brought down to, to the, the most minute levels in the educational system, but it's all about kids. And, and that's where our heart is. Yes. And Jamie, we had a guest on Guy Kawasaki, and he was talking about how we all get to that point in our career where we pay it forward. Mm -hmm. And I love that you yeah. two ladies have taken all of this vast knowledge and really massaged it and worked it into doable pieces that you can give to educators to pay it forward at a time when we really need it. So we thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to share our, our passion and our heart. Yep. Our I love the dynamic between the two of you. I can tell that it was just a, a really wonderful process for you to be able to do this together. Um, it was. It, it, it was. And, and, and it, it just... Things, you know, the way things happen, you just have to sometimes look back and think, wow, that was, you know, because as I said, she was one of the first calls that I made. And, and ever since we've just been on the road together. Yes, that's Amazing. wonderful. So others can get this gift at Amazon. Where else? Yes. So notes. the book is available at amazon.com. You can also find it at solutiontree.com. They are the publishers of the book. Um, so yes, get your copy today. Um, and I, I agree. I think it, it would make, a, you know, a, a, let me say it this way, a very meaningful book yes. study. I yes. think that there are times when we, we do things out of compliance as an educator. Um, there's a compelling reason. Yes. for this, for studying this book. Yes. And, and I think we see it on a daily basis and again, helping both the educator as well as the student. So yes, amazon.com and solutiontree.com. Right. Get and ahead Jamie, of any future crisis. Yeah, exactly. Jamie, I would also kind of um, piggyback on what Jerry was saying uh, Jer the other Jerry, Jerry with a G and I, we're, we're, we're in this to help. And yeah. so if you find yourself in this situation, right. um, just reach out to one of us. We, we, we know the shortcut version, right? And That's we can lovely. take you, yeah. we can take you yes. right through the steps um, because it's about helping you and, and supporting school oh. communities and making a very what can be a traumatic experience, um, a, one in which compassion and, and uh, the passion of the schools comes through. And, uh, and that's, that's what we want. So I would encourage folks to do that as well. You're not alone in this work. We weren't alone and we don't want people to feel alone. So reach out. Oh, thank you. And that's truly who they are. They would yep. respond right back to you. I can vouch for them. Thank <laughs> you.
Well, thank you, ladies. And we will, we will get the link on the site. And thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you for listening. And if you would like to stay linked up, be sure to follow us on Apple and Spotify and subscribe to us on YouTube.